from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Its formal name is the Appalachian String Band Music Festival, but most people simply call it Clifftop. In the world of old-time music, Clifftop is considered a required destination. There you'll see that old time itself has a growing energy and freshness. From Fayette County, the Clifftop Experience. This is Outlook, a reflection of our place, our time, and our people. You know, I just get up there and I feel it. Clifftop, which is also known as the West Virginia String Band Festival. And it happens every first weekend in August. It's gone on for 19 years now, and next year will be its 20th year. As you see this log structure right in front of you, is was built in the 40s uh, with a CCC project. And as things are happening here, you'll find little jam sessions going. Now what's really particularly wonderful about this little jam session over here is all the old masters, uh, the master fiddlers, banjo players, and all the, the, the crowd that is carrying this music on to the next generation and passing it on. They're all back in here every day and in the evenings. And they're, they're sharing their knowledge, sharing their abilities with anyone that will ask them. And they're always having nice little jams here. There's always some really nice little flat footing and clogging going on. Uh, and this fella here on the end here is just amazing. If you can catch a few of his little, little steps here, it, it's just amazing. It, and it's wonderful that they have such access, that the people have access to this. Um, and you don't find festivals like this. You find festivals that highlight bands, highlight the music in a band form. And it's not a participating festival. This festival is all about participation. And it's all about everybody learning from each other. There's people who are learning their first tunes. There are people who are sharing obscure, difficult and challenging versions of tunes. Some very experienced musicians who are rising to another level, kind of off in a corner with a musician that maybe they have been wanting to meet their entire life or maybe a friend that they haven't seen in years. I feel like it's all I know now. <laughs> um, I come down to these festivals as much as possible. I listen to this music as much as possible. I love, there's a real old sound to it. And, um, you know, it's just, I often think of the fiddlers I learned from. It's very powerful being able to learn music firsthand from, from people that, you know, have had music handed down through their family. And I just feel incredibly blessed that, uh, that I was able to learn some of this music from them. Now we can drive right on through. Uh, people have a, a real fear of cars and anything motorized coming through, they tend to step aside. They don't want their fiddles to get hurt. So we're uh, coming through. This gives you a real idea when you're walking through this place, what it's like. I'm just gonna shut up so you can really hear it. This is what I told you about the young people. Every one of these people here, probably been coming to this festival since they were a child. And look at them all. How long you been coming to this festival? Um, five. Five. How long you been coming to this festival? About 
year, maybe. How long you been here? Since last year. Well, she's a newbie. What about you? Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Okay, three years old she's been coming here. Look, okay, this is what I was telling you about. The children, the, the young children are all growing up and taking care of this music. You know, it's like, I can die now. It's all right. It's passed on, you know. Okay, here's a tune I learned from West Virginia fiddler Melvin White. It's powerful. It's emotional. It might seem like simple fiddle tunes, but each fiddle tune tells a story, you know, where you learned it, who you learned it, you know, it's a certain place and time, and, and then you might hear the stories of where they learned the tune and, and the history behind the tune, and, and so you have their, their context behind learning the tune or where it came from, and, and uh, yeah, it speaks to the heart. Do you feel an obligation to, to teach the young, uh, to well, pass it on? Well, I'm playing. I'm really willing to do that all I can, you know, and I've always told the people that wherever I, they talked any to me, you know, that I was gladly show anybody anything that I know, you know, that they think it's worth taking, well, I feel like I'm capable of giving it to them, you know, I've always done that. If you study under people, you know, like I studied under Melvin Wine, Lester McCumbers, who grew up in a totally different age as this, that if you understand where they come from and how they approach the tunes, and then you can almost go back to the roots. Well, it's the purest they are today, you know. Because I'm about the only one around that heard all them old fellows, you know. That's what they tell me everywhere I go, you know. I'm the only one still living that was around when them old fellows was doing all that playing, you know. They was eight or ten, and you know, where I could get with and see, see and hear, but. Uh, they all played a little bit different, you know. And when I played, I played a little bit different on the same tunes they played on, so that's kind of the way it was. I've never seen anybody that really knew exactly what it should be because there was no way to write it down or nothing then, you see. I heard this when I was a little kid, and I, it was supposed to have been an old song then called the Piney Mountains. All the old fiddlers in my part of the country played it, so I'm going to try a little bit of it here. There's a lot of soul, a lot of rhythm, a lot of spirit, and some of it is even haunting. But there's a reason it has survived, because it is the soul and spirit of the mountains. And the only thing I can say is, West Virginia being very remote, some of these traditions takes it way back. And uh, the fiddling, when you hear one of the old fiddlers like Lester McCumbers, I don't know if you got to hear him today, there is a soul and a spirit and something that just takes you back 150 years real fast. There's another real old one that uh, I learned from way back there, one called the Cherry River Line. I think it originated back on Williams and Cranberry River. There was a bunch of guys from uh, part of Braxton County and Calhoun that worked back there before I was born, of course, and that was a long time ago. And there was some of them were musicians, and they had log camps and stuff up in there, and they made up this tune.
can never replace the old generation and the people who played. With them goes a library. With their passing goes a library. But all you can hope as a younger person carrying this on is to do what they tell you. Play it right, try to keep it pure, add yourself to it because if you don't play like you, if it comes from your heart, it's always right. So that's what we have to go with, with the best we can. And that's what they went with. That's why it's a passing on of the legacy. I started out with classical music and I've been playing classically for five and a half years and I still do, but I wanted to find a type of music that I could get more into, you know, like just have more fun with and everything. So um, I thought what better way to do it than play fiddle. So we started looking through the ads, trying to find different teachers and everything and we came across this one. It said Jake Crack Fiddle Lessons and um, so I thought, okay, we'll give it a shot and it's worked out awesomely. I love it. Lester had a teacher, not really sure who that was, but like, you know, Lester learned it, he learned the bowings correctly, you know, um, he learned all the songs correctly, and then he gave it sort of his own little touches, and then he passed it on to Jake and some other people, and now Jake's passing it on to me. I'm very happy. Do you think it's evolving? Do you think the music's changing? Always. Um, talk about that. There's a, like Melvin Wine and Lester McCumbers, I went through great effort to preserve their music and bow it just like they bow it and note it just like they do. But there's there's other songs and other tunes I've learned from other people that I learned it their way, but then I make it my own by mixing Melvin and Lester together maybe or something like that. And so everybody, the music is constantly evolving and constantly changing because every person makes it their own. So is that okay if the music changes? Shouldn't it? Oh, sure, it has to. Everything changes and music changes too, you know. I mean, you know, there's not enough people plays it the old time now to keep it, keep the really old time going, you know. They play what they call old time now, but it's, uh, it's a modern version of the old time music, what it is. There's been a lot of stuff added to it since way back there, you know.
played the square dance up at the street, street dance in Monterey, Virginia, but three weeks ago tomorrow. That was one of the best dances I've played for ages. And everything just clicked. And it was, it was old time music. I had old good stuff we liked to do. And there was an old man called Piggers, about 80 years old, said, boys, you, call it, you play it like they did 100 years ago. So you know how that makes us feel? How does that make me feel? What do you think old time music communicates to a person? Like if you sit there. Have a good time, dance. <laughs> Sing if you want to. <laughs> I mean, get out there and kick them up. You ain't gonna be here but one time. Swing on out and swing on home. Swing that new guy round and round. Step right back and you watch her smile. Step right up and swing a while. Step right back and you watch him grin. Step right up and swing again. Swing on out and swing on home. You got a new partner. Step right back and you watch her smile. Step right up and swing a while. Step right back and you watch him grin. Step right up and swing again. Last time, ladies. Right hands crossed, son, how do you do? Left hand back, fine, thank you. You swing mine and I'll swing yours. Hey, yours is fine, but you give me back mine, cause I'll swing mine and your tiny partner. You swing, find another, find another couple, and you sugar up for the rain, sugar up for the rain, and then another couple before, before you did before. Birdie, here you go, birdie, in the cage now, ain't you sweet? Make that birdie go tweet, tweet, tweet. Birdie out on the buzzard in green, hands round and you're gone again. Hey, you swing mine and I'll swing yours. Yeah, yours is This festival may have 3,500 people here and it's a musician's festival. There'll be a hundred jam sessions going around these grounds all night long until the wee hours of the morning and into the morning. Um, as the days get further on, we still have it going on way into the morning. I just walked up about 10 minutes ago, basically. He, he and I played together. He walked up first, started playing with us, and he showed up. That's how it works. Yeah. You know, the first thing when the, the fiddler starts playing a tune, if it's a new tune, you have to learn it, which is sort of a startling aspect to the music to a lot of people that are new to it, is that you can sit down with someone you've never met before and play music you've never heard before, and within a few minutes, really be playing something appealing together. deep into this music and sometimes it takes several days of immersion to get to this level that they really are trying to get at with the music and you can't just do it sitting at home by yourself or even on an evening of having a few friends over you kind of have to get sleep deprived you have to be around the music and around the musicians for several days before you really get to a level uh, some people consider it a spiritual experience and I have to say it's been true for me 
And uh, it takes an event like Clifftop to kind of get to that level with the music. You know, you look, listen for the chord changes, listen for the rhythm, and then once you kind of get into the groove, then you stop thinking. Then you stop thinking. When you close your eyes and you just kind of... Some people at these late night jams at Clifftop and elsewhere, you know, they consider it to be kind of like a mantra. You know, you just kind of get this large group of people getting this rolling, repetitive tune and rhythm. You know, you, get, you want to get to where you're not thinking about it. you study they have their traditional music and it evolves in time and there's always that funny little juncture where the old and the new kind of butt up against each other and maybe question each other's aesthetic but in time the new becomes the old and it's just passed on from generation to generation and that's what's happening today Cliff up West Virginia Public Broadcasting.